uh, Phoenix FD is a fluid dynamic simulator for 3DS Max for doing uh, smoke, fire, as well as liquids uh, right inside uh, 3DS Max. So just to get started here, I'm going to open up a blank scene and show you where you can find Phoenix in Max. Reset this. There we go. And there's a couple of different uh, places you can find it. So the first place we're going to go is into Geometry and choose Phoenix FD and create ourselves a simulator. So I'm going to drag this out in the top view. And it creates this little box or grid. Uh, Phoenix is a grid-based fluid simulator. So it works on in this volume making uh, little voxels inside the grid and how big your grid is depends on you know exactly what type of simulation you're going to get uh, the, either the quality or the detail level of the simulation as well as the speed uh, the other thing that we're going to need is certainly something to light on fire so I'm going to grab this little sphere and pop it in here and last but not least we're going to go over to helpers and choose Phoenix source. I'm just going to create this little oil barrel. And this is where you pick anything that you want to uh, simulate or actually emit some sort of fluids in the scene. So I'm going to grab this and click on add and uh, pick our sphere. And that's pretty much all we need to do to uh, set something up for lighting on fire inside of Phoenix. So I'm just going to click on start under simulation here. Just select the simulator, click on start, and there you go. We got some flames. So it cruises through. We have a nice kind of viewport preview. You see that we're using a pretty low uh, resolution voxel grid, and we have some kind of flames and smoke right off the bat. I'm actually going to make my timeline a little bit longer so that uh, we have more time to simulate this. So I'll set this to maybe... 400 frames and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, bringing down the grid size so if I go into the grid I'm going to create my sphere grab that simulator <clears throat> and then get our source Okay, <clears throat> so you can see that this has a little bit more detail. The grid size is a little bit smaller, and uh, it's certainly cruising through. We have a good kind of interactive feedback with what's happening uh, in the grid, and I'm also going to kind of uh, go ahead and adjust that time range again and introduce a collision object into the scene. So anything that is actually inside of that volume of the grid is going to be considered as a collision object. If you specifically want something in the grid that is not a collision object, you can certainly assign that. <clears throat> but this works on kind of the premise that if you have something in here, you want it to interact with the fluid. So we go back and click on simulate again. And you'll see that as soon as it reaches this object, it kind of pours around it. And you can actually adjust this stuff in uh, real time. So as it's simulating, I can go in and adjust things like the uh, radius of this, and this will kind of change that simulation. I can move it up or move it down and you know push it to the side so that I can get the interaction there. And I'm going to even give us a little bit more detail in our grid again. So that we can kind of see that billowing around there. So that's kind of how you set up uh, any sort of collisions. Uh, really pretty easy in the scene. And I'll just render this out. Uh, right now we're actually rendering with V-Ray, but I'm going to switch back to Scanline just to show that uh, Phoenix renders just fine and very well. Really fast with Scanline too. So if you're, you know, your particular production just uses basic, you know, Scanline rendering, you can render that stuff out there. And I want to actually move on and kind of talk about some of the <coughs> abilities of the source here. So when I select the source, you can see we're uh, kind of emitting a temperature as well as some smoke. 
And if you want to adjust, uh, you know, what you want it made, you can uncheck this or check it, and you can bring the temperature down. So I'm just going to bring the temperature down to about a thousand, and I'm actually going to increase the smoke. So uh, I'll set that to a value of two, and we'll re-simulate, and you'll see that, you know, all the heat has gone away, and all we have is this kind of smoke that comes up and goes around our object. So the smoke is. Uh, you know, pretty kind of frenetic in here. So I'm going to go in and adjust some of the dynamics. I'm going to bring down the vorticity, which will kind of control, um, you know, how how large these billows of smoke are and make them a little bit smaller. So we can kind of see that here. And I'm also going to go and increase the uh, buoyancy of the smoke so that it moves a little faster. And uh, one thing that's great about Phoenix is the ability to do this while it's simulating, kind of in real time. So you can really see how what will, how this will affect your scene. Like if I bring that time scale down, uh, just as I'm going here, you can see the smoke start to slow down. And if I bring it, you know, back up, if I wanted this to be really, really fast, uh, you can see that then it starts to move very, very fast. Now you probably, you know, for adjusting it, you uh, you can do this while you're simulating. But you know, once you're kind of happy with the look and feel which I am here, then you go back and, and then using these settings simulate the entire thing. So you can see this is moving kind of a lot slower, a lot more like a big puffy uh, smoke. And when we render it out, um, smoke looks okay, but there's really no shadows going on here. So we want to introduce some lighting into the scene. So while this is simulating, I'm just going to go in and create an Omni light here. You can use any light you wish as well as uh, global illumination and V-Ray lights, uh, so skylight and things like that with V-Ray. And I'm just going to go into my lights. I'm going to turn on the shadow, and I'm going to go into the shadow parameters and make sure atmospheric shadows are on, which is pretty key because this is an atmospheric effect. And now when I render that out, you can see that we get the detail there. I'll actually increase the resolution so that uh, it's a little easier to see. up on the screen. There we go. And I'm going to zoom in a bit and adjust that light so that it's a little bit brighter. We'll grab this. So I'll just go into intensity and color. And I can adjust the color of the light too. And that's going to you know, affect what the volume looks like as well. So maybe something that's a little bit on the yellow side. And you can kind of see that come in and the shadows rendered out there for the smoke. So if we want to, we can go back and we can bring our temperature back. So let me go in and just set that to 2K. And that's going to ignite or give us an emission point for this. And you'll see that come in here. And while this is doing this, I'd like to take a look at the uh, preview rollout here. You can see there's a bunch of different stuff that you can preview in the viewport. Right now, we're previewing the temperature as well as the smoke, but if you just want to see one particular element in the view, uh, you can do that, which makes it uh, a lot easier to really understand what it is that you're going to get. And uh, let's just render this out quickly, and you can see those flames kind of building up in there. And there's also a lot of other channels that, uh, that you can set up here. One thing that you might notice with this is uh, a pretty common problem that you usually run into with a grid-based simulator, and that's that at the top, we hit the top of the grid and the stuff gets cut off, which is fairly problematic. Uh, and you know, when I was talking before about you want to make this grid the, you know, the appropriate size for your setup, uh, this is pretty important. Um, but if you make it too large, so let's just say we go into the grid and we say, oh yeah, this needs to be really, really tall. This is going to increase the computational time uh, of this having to, you know, simulate. You can see that because it has to, you know, calculate this entire volume. That's going to take a bit longer to simulate uh, instead of something like that. You can see how much faster that goes by. So Phoenix has a great uh, option for this, which is an adaptive grid, and this is uh, something that's set right here. So I can set the adaptive grid to be based on the temperature. And basically say, you know, at any one of these walls, once the temperature in this uh, voxel reaches this threshold, which is uh, 1,000, it's going to start to push this grid out so that we don't get that clipping that we had before. So I'm just going to click on Start here. 
And actually, you know, you can al already see it a little bit at the bottom. And as we start to get up here, you can see the grid starting to move out. And certainly once we start to get to the top, you're going to see it start pushing out the top. So we won't reach that, uh, that point where it really just starts to clip. <clears throat> it's just going to kind of go through and push the roof of that up. And that way, you know, we never get that clipping at the top. And it's always kind of simulating at the fastest speed possible. This doesn't only grow the grid out. When uh, the temperature cools enough so that you won't see this fluid anymore, it'll constrict the grid down as well, which is a really nice feature. Um, so I'm going to show just another quick example. Let me just hold this. And open up a scene that ships with Phoenix. That kind of shows how this works. So you can see in this case, uh, what we have is uh, these two pieces that are rotating around. And this one is using the adaptive grid here. Um, and this one hasn't been simulated yet on this side. And if you had to kind of simulate something like this, you would need to make a grid that was, you know, as big as this entire situation. So, you know, pretty much if you have something, you can kind of link, as this is, the uh, grid to these objects. And then you can go in. Let me just select these. <coughs> And you can set the adaptive grid based on temperature and say start. And you can see that grid growing. Now, if I just go back, just to kind of show you, and, and this is not set, of course, well, it'll happen a lot faster. But all we get is this little box of flames, which is not really going to be very realistic. It fills up almost immediately. And uh, it clamps off that, uh, which is good. In a production environment, this is good. I have an example of uh, something that's kind of layered together here. I'm just going to bring this up. And you can see I have this windmill that's simulating through. And if I just grab this, so I'm going to grab a couple of different pieces and just isolate them. You can see that this is using that technology in order to start uh, burning the windmill blade and then grow the grid as it kind of pushes through. And it's even going to grow as it you know burns up the blade like so. So this definitely saves a lot of time, especially when you're in a situation where you have, you know, four or five different um, setups where you need to burn from different places and have ignition points from different areas. Uh, it can be great to limit different grids to different sizes so you can get the production quality that you want. Uh, so I'm just going to go back really quickly to that basic scene. <clears throat> And I want to talk about the kind of preview. I'm going to simulate this while I do. And the kind of discrepancy between what you see in the viewport, which is pretty good, and what you'll actually see at render time. So if I render this out, um, you know, definitely a difference in quality and look as far as what my final result is going to be. Looks really nice here. Uh, and what I have in the viewport. I can get a basic idea of the shape and form, but I don't get a great idea of, you know, what, how this smoke or fire is going to, uh, look when I actually render. So Phoenix has the ability to uh, push this off to the GPU in a GPU view. So I'm just going to go into the front view and I'm going to go to extended views and change this to uh, Phoenix FD G GPU. And then I'm going to select this here. So you can see that we have all the flames in GPU. And uh, this is you know playing back at 10, 12 frames a second. And it's actually only slow because we're simulating at the same time while we're doing this. But if I go through here, <clears throat> I can easily scrub this in real time and see what that, you know, how those flames are going to look. And you get a really good understanding of, you know, how this is going to be. So if you have, you know, your, uh, you know, design lead or what have you on the project, they're coming over to take a look at what this is going to uh, set up. You can see this about 30 frames per second that it's going through. You can set that up. Now, in uh, the latest version, which we're running here, which is 2.0, you have the ability to actually simulate. You can see right here, we're only seeing the emittance, which is the flames. And you can actually simulate the uh, smoke or visualize the smoke in the GPU as well. So if I go down to preview, I'm going to just change the background color really quickly. <clears throat> and we already have our light set up. I'm going to click on none next to our lighting and pick our light. And then you'll see here we have both the uh, smoke. Let me just uh, make that background color a little lighter. 
so it's easier to see up here on the display. So you can really see how both the smoke and the flames are going to interact and get a really good idea of how this is going to look when you actually go out to your final rendering with the uh, GPU preview. So uh, and you know as you're adjusting this, you can use this to adjust the color of the smoke and the fire and everything else like that. So to do that, we're going to hop into the rendering tab and bring up color and transparency. And from here, you can see that we have three different areas. You have your emittance, which is going to be the flames. Uh, you have the diffuse color, which is your smoke, and the overall transparency. And you can very easily adjust these independent of each other. So if I go in and I want to adjust the smoke color, uh, I actually have this real-time preview up here. I can adjust this really easily and put you know any color that I want. So we'll set it to some super cool blue. And the same thing with the uh, gradient that controls the emission. I'm just going to actually uh, remove these guys so it's a much simpler curve. And uh, just adjust these colors. So the flames in here go with some nice pink flames you can see there. Everybody likes those. And they'll kind of fade off to blue. So you can really adjust that and you can you know clamp this or move it and see in your GPU how this is going to look overall. And then if you want to adjust the curves, you can go in and do that as well. So I'm just going to remove a couple of these curves. Phoenix is a uh, physically based simulator. So you know uh, all the stuff that it does is based on real temperatures, um, which is really, really helpful, especially when you're doing stuff in real world lighting situations. Uh, it's good to have these real values. And you know, uh, like V-Ray, using you know, physical cameras and things like that, making this physical as possible is really good. Uh, but it also gives you the ability to kind of pump those up and get an artistic look, as you can see. I mean, I don't think we'd really see this type of flames in, uh, in the real world, but I guess you never know. You never know where you're going to burn. So uh, you can kind of adjust this stuff and adjust the power as well as the curve here. I'm just going to reset that really quickly so it brings back the color as well as the curve and there's a bunch of different presets you can save out and load presets so you know if you have your favorite look for whatever you're doing you can kind of set that up there and uh, I'll bring my smoke back to something that's a little more reasonable yeah, something like that I guess and I'm gonna go down to the transparency and adjust that so right now the tra transparency is just based on the simple smoke channel you can choose any channel that you want to base these on uh, and I'm just gonna pick on temperature and you can see we get a uh, really different look to what's happening with our smoke. So you, we really get this, instead of the big puffy effect we had before, we get this kind of wispy smoking effect, um, which is good. And this is all after simulation. So really we're just adjusting the render quality uh, of this. So I can go in and uh, you can see this ramp that's here. I can adjust that ramp so that it makes the smoke thicker. Uh, if I want to there and I can also bring down you can see with this particular transparency where we don't have a lot of smoke around it the uh, The flames or the emittance material is pretty high so I can just bring that down a bit And kind of ramp it out so that it's not so much in the middle and I'll bring that down a little more So you have a lot of control over you know how these things are going to look both on the transparency as well as on the color um, So that's adjusting a bit uh, there and I'm just going to actually bring back up our little windmill scene here to show you the layered setup that we have. So with this scene, we have a bunch of different grids that go through. And I'm going to actually bring up our GPU preview so that we can preview these. And we'll select this. And I'm just going to grab this portion here so you can see that we have uh, that that piece that's burning and you can see it set up and how it's gonna look inside of the GPU preview and in this particular scene you know kinda taking Phoenix from the you know simple uh, burning a sphere type of thing into a more production ready environment you can see that we have layered grids that are kinda doing different things and and this middle one is actually doing something interesting uh, we can see from the source that uh, this one right here is actually only emitting uh, fuel which is all of these little dots that you can see here if I go into the preview we could just change the color of this fuel 
and basically what's happening is the grid below is kind of lighting on fire and then it's growing up and burning all the fuel like the wood is the fuel for this so we kind of you know cruise through and then uh, all that body catches on fire and it really doesn't matter whether it's catching on fire from this or this whenever the um, you know the burn level gets reached on this it'll kind of catch fire and then we have this piece at the top uh, which is pretty good and we can render this out uh, you know with scan line or uh, let me just go single output or with V-Ray so you can see we get some pretty quick feedback the other thing that's happening in the scene is we have uh, the fire lighting the environment and in this case you see we're using scan line so there's no global illumination that's going on uh, this is actually a point light uh, setup that works really really well I'll go to a little further where we have some more fire coming through and you can see it kind of lighting uh, that portion there it might be a little bit dark there but I'm gonna bring this up and show you the kind of end result animation so I'm just gonna bring up PD player so I can bring up those frames so here is my mill frames and I have a bunch of different passes that have uh, been set up too so you know if you're working with Phoenix you'll also be able to so I'm gonna bring that in and I'm also gonna go in and bring the beauty pass in which is right here oh, of course there we go so you can see this pass uh, and if I just kind of scrub through the way the flames are you know growing on the on the object and everything like that and the kind of look and feel and integration that you get with all these pieces cool. so the next portion that I want to kind of talk about is the liquids in Phoenix so I'm just gonna reset my scene and uh, I'm gonna open up a start scene to kind of uh, create some liquid animations here so let me just go and open up our beer scene so here's our beer scene and uh, I'm just gonna quickly set up the same thing that we did before the nice thing about Phoenix is that you don't have to have a bunch of different tools or parameters to do liquids or smoke or uh, one or the other they're all the same parameters so once you become familiar with them you can go ahead and uh, leverage them to do uh, the liquids as well so I'm gonna drag out that similar simulator the same way that we did for our fire and I'm gonna go and create our helper which is the source and in the source I'm gonna pick this to emit from so this little cylinder which is pouring into a cylinder here and I'm gonna ask it to uh, just emit a temperature of one which is very low obviously for the liquid I uh, don't want it to have any smoke and I'm going to set it to emit from a particle ID and what we should have then is if I go back and select my uh, simulator I'm just going to adjust quickly a couple of things I'm going to bring the vorticity down and in the preview uh, we're going to preview that value of one instead of the value of a thousand and click on start and the last thing I'm gonna do here is with this guy selected I'm gonna go to the liquids rollout and I'm gonna click on temperature because that's where we're gonna get our liquid information so we change it from disabled to temperature and that's gonna invoke the uh, liquid simulator and then we're gonna see these liquids kinda pour through they're falling through the bottom of the grid so I'm gonna go up to the grid and uh, just set the boundaries so that they're closed and then I'll start again and you'll see this will kinda pour in and then start to fill up there let me just change the color of that so it's easy to see in the preview I don't know why we have the smoke uh, let's get rid of these uncheck natural and uh, we'll just change this to something that's pretty bright so you can kinda see it there so now we have our liquids kind of coming in and forming and in order to render these out we're gonna make sure that we're in V-Ray and we're gonna go over to 
the rendering rollout and turn on uh, geometry mode as well as solid mode and we're going to set our surface level. So I'm going to grab this and set that surface level to uh, maybe one. And I'll ask it just to render a single frame here. Okay, and what you'll see is we get our liquids and now they're being surfaced. I'll just go to a frame where these are pouring in more. This is a, obviously a lower, a low level simulation, but you still get a good uh, render out of, or a good uh, look out of this liquids that are pouring in. And you can see here kind of what's, what's coming in here and we can adjust that surface level to take advantage of more of that. So I'm going to go in here and just kind of drop that down a little bit more, maybe 0.6. And we'll start to see more of that stream come in and hit the bottom. And now I'm just going to assign a material. So I'm going to go into the material editor. And I'm going to grab a standard V-Ray material, apply it over to our liquids, and render that out. And you can see that we have a nice start for our liquids rendering. Renders very fast. We get this kind of pouring in here, uh, which is pretty cool. In 2.0, uh, what we also have is the ability to do things like splashes and foam, which are really cool. So if I go into the liquids rollout, uh, you can see this little foam set up here. I'm just going to check that, and I'm going to give it a uh, birth rate of 20. So this is like an extended particle system on top of the uh, voxel fluid system. And so let me set that to uh, 20. I'm going to bring the half-life down or up quite a bit to about 10,000 and I'll adjust uh, the rising rate a little bit and let me just see here we'll set our size size is pretty good and I'm gonna set the min max where's my min max yeah we'll go with that for the moment so now when I click on simulate again as this comes down what you're gonna see is uh, this foam start to build up at the bottom you can see the little white particles, and I'm going to change their color to something that's really easy to see. So now they're really bright yellow. So these fo this foam starts to build up just as if you were pouring a glass of Coke or beer. And uh, they're going to kind of come in, and then they're going to settle and rise. So I'm going to show you a quick kind of the end result of this. So here's the same setup and the simulation of the fluid coming in and then you can see those white particles they might be kinda hard to see against the white background so again I'm just gonna change that preview Doo -doo. so I'll change the foam look to yellow again and you can kinda see them swirling through so I'm just gonna play this back in real time you can see they kinda swirl in and then they start to rise to the top like the foam would and it builds a uh, you know nice foamy foamy head on your beer, which is what everybody wants. So let me just go to uh, render any. Uh, actually, I'll go to the animation that I have up here, rendered out, and kind of show you how that looks. Go up one more into the beer. So here's my beer frames, and here they are down here. I think we want to go with this one. I'm going to pop that in here. And we can kind of scrub that. So you can see this comes in. You get the nice liquid pouring. And then you have this stuff kind of sloshing around and the foam building up. Uh, this uses a cell structure for the foam. So it's fully ray traced. And, uh, you know, it can re refract and, and get all the physically correct stuff that you want out of foam or splashes. And we have the head here. So I'll just go and uh, play that back. Let me go all the way back to frame zero. So we can see that pour in, kind of churn around and stop, and then the foam kind of build up and build the head at the top. And settle into place. So as well as the foam, inside Phoenix, of course I just launched Maya on accident, uh, inside Phoenix uh, you also have the ability to add splashes. So if I go in to the simulator under liquids you can see we have foam 
as well as splashes. So I can turn these on and basically the same thing will happen. When a threshold is me reached where you would want a splash to happen, it's going to birth uh, all these little tiny particles and you'll be able to render those out. I'm just going to open up a quick scene that shows this. So here we have a pool of water and you can see we have this object that's coming through. I'm just going to close this out for the moment. So the fluid has been kind of generated as a large pool and then as this comes through it splashes in the water and you can see the difference between the voxels. Again I'm going to cruise into the preview and change the color of the splashes. So the actual um, fluid simulation is are these voxels right here. And you can see the splash and how it kind of radiates out. And it goes underneath the water where you're going to get all this information here. And then you can see the actual particles being born uh, with these little yellow splashes that happen there. So the integration of both having the fluid dynamic system with the particles that you can born from them based on the um, threshold that's met, met for any sort of splash or foam situation. Uh, is really cool. All right. Um, so that's a little bit about Phoenix Fluid Dynamics. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, let me just.